Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's a really exciting day because it's spring planting day in the garden. So I feel like there is a lot to catch you guys up on because it has been a little while. I went out of town and half of my garden bolted while I was out of town. And for those of us in warmer climates who get to garden year round, I am now in that weird little awkward phase where I am trying to merge the fall and winter garden with the spring garden. I'm having to kind of plant all of my plants around what was already planted. Some of my stuff is bolted, some of my stuff has not bolted. So on top of that, the gardener supply shoot that I have been talking about for so long now is finally happening tomorrow and the next day so I am trying to get the garden in tip-top shape have everything looking as good as it can uh, so everything looks really good for the photo shoot so I have already done most of the planting out here because since I've been in a time crunch trying to get everything looking nice, I just put the camera down and really tried to focus on just getting everything done. But I wanna walk you around and show you what all I've done, what all I've planted, and just show you where I'm at. So everything for the most part is looking really good. I had some peas on these trellises that kind of met the end of their life and were looking really, really bad. So I went and found some really good pepper plants from a local nursery. None of my pepper starts really took off. Um, so I have been needing peppers anyways. So I went and got these pepper plants for the standalone Zenith trellises as well as got some uh, bush cucumbers here in the front and it's kind of empty in the back here but I had a bunch of lettuce heads that bolted but I have sown some bush beans along the back. We have some Romanesco starting to head up. Look how spiky, those are so interesting. So it's like a purple cauliflower. Some beets. Hoping this will calendula will start blooming again. On top of me going out of town, it had fro froze before that. We had a hard freeze. Then it warmed up. Everything bolted. Then we got flooded with so much rain. If you're in Florida, you probably got it too. Um, so I have been working so hard to get everything deadheaded and planted just so that they can start blooming again and looking nice and not soggy. Over here, I also put together one of Gardner Supply's new products for this year that I think I'm finally able to share and talk about. It is called a tomato halo and it is built to go around an existing tomato plant and it keeps the water, keeps it even, a really even watering and slowly waters the tomato plant so it never really gets dry. And I also think because you can water this and not water the plant, you're not getting a whole bunch of splash back, which really causes a lot of disease. And it fits with their trellis styles, which is really cool. So I just wanna show you guys what that looks like. And they have a trellis for pretty much every style of tomato keeping. Like some people keep it pruned back to one stem, which is typically what I have done in the past. But you can also get really much bigger sturdier if you want to let your tomatoes branch out. I might actually let, this one's a sun gold, it has a bunch of cherry tomatoes, I might let it just kind of take off and not keep it as pruned as I normally do my tomatoes this year. Um, we have a bunch of flower blossoms already. So the tomato halos were extremely easy to put together and I will show you how to do that right now. I'm going to show you two different ways of installing the deluxe tomato halo. In this instance, the halo needs to be inserted into the ground around the existing trellis. All you have to do is slide the two sides together to connect them. Because my tomato start is still relatively small, I'm going to fill up the tomato halo first and then slide my tomato plant through the trellis to plant it inside the halo. 
I personally like to remove the lower leaves of my tomato plant and bury them just a little bit to allow them to establish more roots. I really love showing the demonstration with this particular tomato support because it's a really common design that a lot of people use. However, the Dull Elks Tomato Halo does work with a lot of other gardener supplies tomato supports, so I will link those down below. For the next one, I'm going to be using the Titan Tomato Cage, which is large enough to go around the tomato halo. My plant star is also on the larger side and is more established, so I'm going to plant it in the ground first, placing the tomato halo around the plant. I really like this method a lot because it allows you to fill in the soil afterwards and kind of bury the plant a little bit more. So this allows the tomato to establish more roots, building a stronger, sturdier, healthier tomato plant. Again, that's just always been my personal preference, but I really love that no matter what your style is or how you plant your tomatoes or grow your tomatoes, there really is a lot of different options and ways that you can do this to make it work for you. Ultimately, just make sure you're following the directions you receive from Gardener Supply with your tomato halo, and these are so easy to put together. Last, you're just going to fill up the tomato halo reservoirs with water and watch your plant grow. So then I planted a bunch of stuff here in the front, a bunch of flowers and lettuces and herbs gotta have some basil it's already looking so good so are our, these little lettuces kept this uh, calendula that was here but put in a sturgeon that's supposed to trail so I'm hoping I did a lot of stuff this year where I'm hoping it'll trail over the edge like this is a kaboka squash I'm hoping it will just kind of spill and take up the ground right here I think that'll look really cool in all the beds I put some squashes here. I had started a bunch of squash myself, but they hadn't popped up yet. Um, so I went to the nursery and picked up some squash just so that this bed wouldn't be looking empty. I um, also have these little small lettuce starts in between. By the time that these will kind of be done producing, I think these will start getting big. So I think it'll work out. And then I need to come back through and trellis up these peas, but they have definitely reached the end of their life. I am doing my darndest to try to keep them alive enough for the photo shoot so that this teepee isn't empty. The ones in the back here are looking a little bit better, but you can see I've planted some runner beans and some nasturtiums. Oh, let me show you from this side. All around to replace these peas as soon as the photo shoot is over. Look at this trailing nasturtium. Isn't that so pretty? gonna hide behind this plant really quick just because it's so windy here where I live but I have really learned this year that it's a lot harder to plant for a specific date or photo shoot than I had ever imagined so really kudos to anybody who has to do that usually I can just take a picture for Instagram or whatever as things are looking good so working with somebody um, is really challenging but I do really like a challenge and I have learned so much this year about how to better do this that I think I'll be able to put into practice again. So in this back trellis here, I have the tall zenith trellis, which didn't have anything binding on it. All of my runner beans were not taking off quickly enough. Then I tried cucumbers, that wasn't taking off quickly enough. So I went and bought a mandevilla vine and it looks absolutely stunning and then I have some tomatoes on the side this is African blue basil a bunch of uh, zinnias that I started kale this is a Mexican sunflower that I've been watching grow and then some other plants that I kind of temporarily put in to fill in space but ultimately I'm gonna be having sunflowers behind this trellis and I think that's really gonna look so beautiful because it's so tall. I think tall sunflowers beside it is gonna be gorgeous. And in the back, once I pull up these rutabagas, um, I think I'm gonna do some over. 
trunk right here in the back. And I've kind of been deciding whether I should leave this Mandevilla vine or not, or replace it with some cucumbers that I kind of had originally wanted to be growing. My mom really says I shouldn't, but my garden's kind of small, so I kind of need more room for food, but we'll see. Of course, all the kale from fall, my dog. Um, more calendula. Look how gorgeous all these different varieties are. All together, so pretty. Some more peppers and eggplant that I picked up from the nursery. More zinnias, another probably of either kaboka or butternut squash. Like I said, I really want a lot kind of spilling over. This is a coral honeysuckle vine that I also needed to get something kind of going on this teepee here. But I also have started some, I think called sunshine runner beans. I'm not quite sure which ones I ended up planting. Um, but they're like put off pink flowers and beans. Um, and they're just starting to pop up. So now I need to figure out whether I want to let the honeysuckle take off here or move that somewhere else. I am working on my cottage garden around my house. I might move that in there. I think I actually want to buy another set of these TP connectors from Gardener Supply to put a TP in my uh, cottage garden by my house. And then over here on the back side, I have just some garlic, some more peppers on each side of this trellis. Again, the peas are reaching the end of the life and I'm trying really hard to keep them keep them alive but they're honestly just looking very pitiful so I am gonna go try to spruce these up here in a minute and this one's looking good look at that try to figure out what I can do to spruce these up I've got a bunch of lettuces and other stuff intermingled still slowly harvesting carrots from the back orange Hawaii marigold, some more nasturtiums. I love the variegation on this. And then along my back fence line here, I have put together a lot of the products that we are gonna need to be getting shots of. So these are called maxi hoops and you can basically stand them up over a raised bed and put, they have a new bird, um, bird safe netting that you can put over them. I think they have uh, shade and frost cloth as well so that's really cool this is a critter protector fence um, so really great to put around the garden especially if you deal with critters that can get in the garden like deer or chickens or anything like that I have another one that I haven't put together yet and then the crop coop crop chicken coop uh, pest protector that I think I've shown before too. And then I have some overflow of plants in the back here. I ordered some potatoes and was hoping to do a bunch of potatoes in these grow bags, but they haven't come in. So I feel like it's going to be too hot by the time they get here, which really stinks. But So now I'm walking you over to the cottage garden. Hopefully it's a little less windy over here. Um, you can hear me better and I'm going to show you all that I'm working on around the house. I'm really putting, since I had to buy a lot of new plants from the nursery to make that garden look a little bit more full, I'm going to use a lot of the plants that I started over here. Plus I just, I started so many flowers and really just need a place to put them. So here is the little cottage garden area. I'm gonna fill up some soil in this. This is a pot that broke and plant something in it. Then I have all of these plants in the back here. I have some eggplant left over, um, a bunch of basil, a bunch of zinnias still. This is a straw flower. Um, this is a Bells of Ireland. A bunch of tomatoes and just a whole bunch of different herbs and more flowers. So I'm thinking I'm gonna fill in the center around this fountain with calendula and um, that's a blackberry bush, that's nettle. 
These are Black Eyed Susans. They'll come back. I'm oregano, um, tricolor sage, chives, some zinnias, a bells of Ireland, nasturtium, bronze fennel, some lavender, some Mexican sunflowers, some aloe over there. I obviously have a lot left to still plant here that I'm trying to get going for spring, a lot left in the kind of cottage garden area place, but at least the main garden is starting to be kind of complete and I can just focus on other stuff, especially after the photo shoot tomorrow, which I'm so excited about um, just because we've been waiting since like last fall to do it. So I'm really, really excited. I've just anticipated it for so long. So I'm really excited to just have that whole experience. So I will talk to you all soon. I've got to get back to planting and then I will hopefully see you the day of the gardener supply shoot. I'm hoping I can get my mom to come help me get some behind the scenes footage for you all. So hopefully I will see you then and you'll get to see a little bit of that. the shoot with Gardner Supply and the photographer should be here about 6 45 or 7 he texted me so drinking coffee from my favorite chicken cup probably gonna have to go figure out how to <laughs> tame my hair uh, in just a minute here and get ready but um should be a really fun day So here's a little behind the scenes of the photo shoot with Gardner Supply. I was feeling so nervous before this day began because even though I video myself all the time for YouTube, being photographed is an entirely different process. However, the photographer they hired, Cole, made me feel so comfortable and was really easy to work with. He drove over from Jacksonville for the shoot, so I will link all of his social media down below because he really was great to work with. I have never done before, never even envisioned being able to do. It's just been such a fun and unique experience getting to work with Gardner Supply, trial a lot of their existing and their new product developments for this new 2022 year. And I am just feeling so thankful and excited about the whole thing. And I can't wait to see the photos and videos and see how it all turned out. So I hope you guys are doing well and I will see you soon. I've got a little bit more spring planting I need to finish up. I need to finish spring planting in the cottage garden but everything is shaping up beautifully for 
this year and it's off to a really exciting start. So I will see you guys next time. Bye you guys. Also just real briefly, look how cute this little garden hod is. I've never had a garden hod and so I'm so excited. I got a quarry knife. So stinking cute!